I don't know, maybe your car is kind of dumb. It's not that I don't like your car. It's just that we have fixed this adjective smart to connected devices, connected gadgets. So statistically, it's very likely that your car is not smart. Recently, I've been shopping for some kind of dash camera to put into both my car and my wife's car, and the folks over at Raven sent me along their super awesome LTE connected Android powered dual dash camera system. Uh, take it for a test drive. It's a little less impressive just holding it. It's supposed to be mounted in a car. We started seeing teasers of the Raven late last year, and now it's a finished finalized product complete with a data service to boot. Android powered with dual cameras, interior and road cameras for the front of your car, dual displays for whatever information you might want to feed your eyes while operating a motor vehicle, and it connects to your vehicle's OBD2 port, not only for power, but for extremely accurate vehicle tracking. Raven not only tracks your vehicle stats, but like other Fitbit-style car app programs or services, uh, Raven can also give you alerts when you might be accelerating a little too aggressively or braking a little too hard, those times where you might be driving more wastefully than you really should be. Popping in an SD card will allow for DVR-style capture of every trip you take, including interior and exterior cameras, which are then also organized into three separate folders for short little clips and also time-lapse videos of your entire trek. Setup is really straightforward. You plug the cable into the OBD2 port on your car. Now, I just opted to route the cable with the included adhesive clips that Raven provides. If you're a little more daring, you can dig into the dashboard of your car and really hide that cabling, make it look a little bit prettier. After everything's attached, everything's plugged in, an app on your phone will guide you through the rest of the setup, especially for the Raven connected service. What I've always wanted in a car is to have some kind of heads up display, which minimizes the amount of eye travel for how I take my eyes off the road to get relevant pieces of information. Always bother me in automotive design that we not only have to take our eyes off the road, but we have to pull them into the car, close focus on a dark dashboard, and then push our eyes back out to see what's going on just to see how fast we're going. We're all used to that, but really that's not good design. Finishing up this review, pulling the Raven out of my car, I'm gonna have to send it back to the manufacturer. I immediately missed having that little piece of information in my peripheral vision, which was very easy to access. The app for your phone is really well laid out, very feature rich, and immediately takes you to location information and a live feed of what's going on around your car. Raven wants to be the main hub, the digital brain of your connected car. Now, that does run into some issues in that Google Maps and Apple Maps don't really play well with a lot of third-party hardware and services. Raven is licensing Mapbox for their driving and their turn-by-turn, -turn, which worked really well for me in the greater LA area, but I can't speak to any other areas where Mapbox mapping information might not be as complete as what you're used to with Google Maps or Waze. I got a very simple arrow prompt for my navigation up at eye level. I didn't have to look inside my car at a phone screen I just got my next turn delivered to me in a very simple, easy to digest way. That's very helpful when you're operating a motor vehicle in LA traffic. And I'm happy to report that Raven developers have been iterating pretty aggressively on this platform. When I first got the Raven, you couldn't keep turn by turn running on the dash unit if you turned your phone screen off which was super annoying, but a recent update fixed that problem where you could disable your phone screen and just rely on the simple prompts sent up to your dashboard. Getting to the observation features on the Raven, there's both a creepiness and a peace of mind factor at play with having cameras in your car. Going back through the stored video, I'm a little surprised at the number of trips we take to Costco. Apparently we're big fans of the Costco and those really cheap hot dogs. Um, but I also might need to work on my singing voice. Uh, in my old age, I'm getting a bit pitchy when I'm warbling along with my toddler daughter to let it go. I'd like to say that you eventually get over that feeling of being watched or being observed. But after driving with this thing for a couple weeks, I don't know that that ever really completely went 
away. I always had this feeling like I should be on my best behavior in case something happens and a person other than a family member needs to reference what took place inside my vehicle. That is also unfortunately how I talk to myself in my brain. The peace of mind though is having video at the ready in case there is some kind of vehicular altercation and then also being able to log into this unit whenever you want. The Raven will also deliver notifications if it detects that your car is being broken into or is being moved, though I found those to be a little overly sensitive. I got numerous your car has been moved while parked notifications when really nothing had transpired, nothing had taken place with my car. Thankfully, my car was not broken into or stolen during this review, though it would have made for a really fun video to test those features out. I'd rather not. I really enjoyed the experience of having the Raven in my car, but I do have one small minor gripe and one potentially major concern. Normally, when I'm driving around in my car, I depend on an OBD2 Bluetooth plugin, which communicates with an app on my phone so that I can very easily log and track my mileage. And it's a godsend when I'm doing my taxes at the end of the year, where I don't have to manually log all of my work trips. I just download one giant spreadsheet, make a couple little notes, and then I send it off to our accountant. At present, Raven only gives you averages based on your driving behavior. So if it's tracking that kind of information, averaging my trips, it's a bit disappointing that I can't just download a CSV file, some kind of spreadsheet, and use that as my mileage log at the end of the year when I'm getting ready to file my taxes. Pretty minor gripe, not gonna apply to a lot of you out there, especially if you don't use your car for any kind of business or work stuff. But the major concern I have is likely gonna come down to where you live. I live in Southern California, and over the summers, it's not uncommon to see temperatures rise north of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. More to that point, my two weeks testing the Raven turned into a pretty brutal torture test of what heat can do to consumer electronics. A few days hitting over 110 degrees in the valley, and then my family took a very short trip, a three-day weekend, where my car was parked out in the sun and I still wanted to see if the Raven was going to be able to log in to that LTE connection so I could see if my car was safe in that open parking lot. This is an Android computer with active cooling. There are little fans that spin up to try and keep air flowing over sensitive electronics. Near the end of my review period, I had one day where at the end of a long drive, the fan started to sound a little bit grindy. That grinding sound didn't return the next day I went out for a drive, but it was a little concerning. And in addition, looking through the DVR footage, I had a handful of clips that suffered from pauses or stutters in the video capture feed in a very similar way to when I've had phones give me excessive heat warnings when I'm out shooting my camera reviews. So let's say you live in Phoenix, Arizona. You live in Phoenix, Arizona. Couldn't help the dad joke there. And let's say you also park your car in the sun for long periods of time. If you were to purchase a Raven, I would highly recommend not leaving it in your car, detaching it, stowing it, taking it with you, just so that you don't cook this car computer. But that defeats some of the benefits of having this computer in your car, being able to log into it as a security device. This won't be as much of an issue if you regularly store your car in a garage, some kind of shaded or temperature controlled parking, or if you live outside of the Southwest. The Raven largely survived my Southern California torture test. I'm fairly confident this computer will handle more temperate climates well over time. A pretty complete feature set, and that brings us to the price. Raven is selling for $299 for an individual unit, or you can opt for the two Raven family pack for $549. Service plans start at $8 a month with a limit on how many LTE video check-ins you can have per month and climb all the way up to $32 a month for more video check-ins and a more robust cloud storage feature for your videos. That pricing is pretty aggressive for automobile consumer technology, especially for a full-fledged LTE connected device which plugs into your car computer for more accurate tracking, and it's not just some fancy Bluetooth dash camera. Which brings me to a pretty important note for adding a piece of tech like this to your car. 
and that's considering your insurance. Surprisingly, in Los Angeles and Southern California, we don't seem to have any kind of special deal for insurance if we just add a dash camera to our car. That's absolutely shocking, uh, considering the number of automobile collisions that take place in this state every day. So I couldn't score a discount on my insurance there. But after chatting with my insurance provider, the fact that the Raven is both LTE and GPS connected means that it might qualify as a security device if my car is ever stolen. Depending on where you live, your mileage will vary, but it's totally worth looking into if you're looking to add some kind of technology like this to your car. Specifically for the Raven, a discount like that could help offset the cost of adding a monthly LTE plan. I hope to see more products like this entering the space, filling in the gaps left by automobile manufacturers. The Raven is an extremely ambitious step towards making our cars smarter. And I'm really going to miss these little screens now that I'm done with this review. There are, of course, links down below this video where you can find more information on the Raven, uh, get info on those service plans, and shop this puppy online. And in addition to the Raven links, there are also other links where you can support production on this channel. I've recently collected all of my partnerships, my affiliates, and my brand deals into one convenient page on somegadgetguy.com. You can get yourself something cool, buy some fun games, shop for some accessories, or contribute directly to my Patreon campaign. That Patreon's gonna be the future home for all of my smartphone camera and audio tech reviews. I'm hosting some fun contests for supporters, and it's also becoming its own fun little community of like-minded tech geeks, so I hope you'll check it out. Also, directly below this video, you should see some kind of shelf where you can pick up my very first pieces of Gadget Guy merch. You too can drink delicious beverages out of my all-time favorite dad joke technology malpropism pun. So yeah, click on those mug images below this video. You folks know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, and I will catch you on the next review.